we need to have a serious conversation. Sunscreen does not cause blackheads. I said it, I said it. I know it's unpopular to say that because a lot of people struggle to find a good sunscreen that doesn't seem to aggravate their skin. But I hate to break it to you, there's not a formula out there that I could hand to you and say, this sunscreen will cause you to have blackheads. This sunscreen will not cause you to have blackheads. It's just not how blackheads and sunscreens play, okay? There's not an ingredient that's like, okay, this ingredient is going to tell the cells lining your pore to turn over abnormally, come together into a plug that when exposed to air is gonna oxidize and turn black. You see what I'm saying? It's just, it's just not that, it's just not that deep. I'll tell you what is deep. Sunscreen trying to save you from the worst kind of blackhead, the most stubborn, you guessed it, a solar comedone, otherwise known as senile comedone, although I don't know why that terminology is still being used. Senile is just not a nice word, okay? Makes it seem like you're so old that you don't know where you are. Solar comedone, that's what we're going to talk about today. The blackhead sunscreen is trying to save you from. It can be a blackhead or it can be a whitehead. As a friendly reminder, Reminder, comedones are just pores that are filled with keratinous material that appears white at first when it's below the surface of the skin, but once it is exposed to air, it turns black. Below, whitehead. Exposed, blackhead. People who get blackheads and whiteheads, people who have acne, unless, unless your skin is so sun damaged that it makes blackheads. Yeah, that's a real thing. It tends to appear in older adults, Caucasian persuasion, who have had a lot of sun damage. Especially especially those who have lived in a tropical or subtropical climate at high altitude, people who maybe spent their life working outdoors. We're not just talking your casual go to the beach once a year and enjoy a little bit too much sunshine. We're talking people who spent a lot of time working outdoors in direct sunlight with no sun protection. It may be more common for people who have undergone radiation therapy. Let me tell you who really gets these. People who smoke. Tobacco smoke plus chronic sun exposure is like building a blackhead. Why does this happen? Well, the sun damage in the deeper layers of the skin, it destroys the collagen, it destroys the elastic tissue. It really just makes the deeper layers of the skin less supportive so that your follicle, aka your pore, basically situated in this degenerate dermis. And as a result, doesn't have the support that it needs and it dilates. It dilates and as the skin cells lining that pore are trying to turn over, well, it fills up into a prominent whitehead, that material gets exposed to air just like with acne and you get a blackhead. Now in contrast to acne, there are no inflamed spots. There's no inflammation going on. For that reason, this is not painful. It doesn't itch. Those are symptoms that people with acne can have. You're not going to go on to get painful cysts. You're not going to get pus. There's no inflammation. Now these blackheads can in fact be colonized with the same bacteria that is responsible for acne, but it doesn't quite play the same role. It's sort of their guilty by association. I mean, we all have this bacteria, otherwise known as cutie bacterium acnes, living within our pore. And if you go looking, you'll find it in a solar comedone. Solar comedones have a predilection for, well, chronically sun exposed skin, especially the skin around the eyes. I mean, it's delicate. It's a lot more vulnerable to damage, but they can also appear on the cheeks, the nose. They can even appear on your earlobes. I mean, people don't typically get acne on their earlobes, but you can get a solar comedone, a blackhead on your earlobes. Depending on how much sun exposure your upper body gets, you might have them on the back of your neck. You might even have a couple on the upper back and the chest. Speaking of the back, a lot of people who have these, they've, they've got a lot more going on. It's not like they are there in isolation. They have other signs of extensive sun damage, including skin yellowing, because the elastic material in your skin kind of gets like gluey and gummy and not as functional. It's called solar elastosis and you see this yellowish hue to the skin. The skin kind of has this rough, coarse texture to it. If you look at the back of someone's neck who has had a lot of sun exposure throughout their lifetime, especially on the back of their neck, you see these really, really deep furrows. That's called cutis rhomboidalis nuque. People who have solar comedones, they likely have so much sun damage that that in and of itself suggests they're at risk for certain types of skin cancers and more 
often than not, they actually already have skin cancers and or pre-skin cancers called actinic keratosis. These little rough scaly spots that require treatment. They need to be frozen off because some of them will go on to form skin cancers. Solar comedones, unlike acne, are not something that goes on to scar, but they don't go away on their own. They're not harmful per se. They just kind of represent extensive sun damage and are a clue, hey, this is a person who we probably should be paying closer attention to to make sure they don't start forming a lot of skin cancers if they haven't already. Why is it that people who have a lot of sun exposure and smoked, why did they get these? Well, smoking wipes out your skin's antioxidant systems. It really just suppresses the defense mechanisms against sun damage. So together, they are like a double hitter, and that makes someone more predisposed to getting these. This isn't something that we see in people who have deeper skin tones because the melanin content in the skin likely is protective against this extensive type of damage. If someone has undergone a radiation therapy to sun exposed skin, that also can make them more vulnerable to developing these prominent blackheads and whiteheads later on in life because radiation therapy, it's quite damaging actually to the skin. Couple that with the destruction of ultraviolet radiation, as you can imagine, that really, really, really can take a toll on the deeper layers of the skin, leading to blackheads and whiteheads, otherwise known as, well, solar comedones. Now, if you are somebody who is undergoing radiation therapy or you're about to for a cancer, check out my video on skincare during radiation therapy. I give a lot of tips and tricks and things to look out for in that video. So as a dermatologist, if I see solar comedones, I'm not necessarily concerned about them specifically because they're not necessarily harmful to the individual, but rather I'm concerned that this person has had extensive sun damage to the point where they're at an increased risk for making a lot of skin cancers. That is something that I would be worried about, but patients are obviously going to be bothered to a certain extent, depending on the individual, of course, everyone's different, bothered by the appearance. So is there anything that can be done to get rid of these? What about like basic acne treatments? Many acne treatments are helpful because they target the acne causing bacterium or they target the inflammation. Yes, the acne causing bacterium is present here, but it's not really playing a role. It's more just there. And again, there's no inflammation. So certain acne treatments are not going to do anything, but potentially just dry out and irritate the skin further. And when the skin becomes dry and irritated, well, blackheads become even more obvious. So what, if anything, that you could apply to the skin might help these? Well, a topical retinoid, right? I mean, is that the story of dermatology? Sun causes all of these skin problems and the solution is wear sunscreen to prevent and use retinoids to correct. That's it always kind of seems like a theme. It's I promise you it's not always the case, but here it is. Topical retinoids, whether it be tretinoin, adapalene, tazeratine, can help improve the appearance of these. With long-term consistent use of a topical retinoid, it can improve the quality of not just the surface of the skin, improve epidermal turnover to reduce that pore clogging, but it also can improve collagen quality in the deeper layers of the skin, building back up some of that supportive framework ultimately was lost and led to the formation of all these prominent pores. When people have sun damage to this extent that they have developed solar comedones, the skin is a lot more prone to water loss, to dryness. They have more of an impaired barrier and because of that, moisturizers can just make a difference in the cosmetic appearance of the skin, but also moisturizers aid in replenishing water content. And because of that, they allow for the epidermal turnover processes to ensue at a more normal rate. And some of that is at baseline going to be an issue here for people who have solar comedones. The sun damage has not just affected the deeper layers of the skin, destroying that supportive framework, but it's also made it so that the epidermis, the top part of the skin, turns over more slowly, abnormally, the skin cells get stuck together, and then ultimately clog that now dilated pore. Salicylic acid may help to a certain extent in terms of helping to loosen the buildup in that dilated pore. Benzoyl peroxide is keratolytic, so it may help unclog the pore a bit, but it tends to be very drying. And again, the acne causing bacterium is not really playing a role here. There are procedures that can improve the appearance, namely laser resurfacing treatments that help to improve the quality of the deeper layers of the skin, as well as the surface of the skin ultimately can help quite a bit. We can also do electrosurgery. It sounds really fancy. It basically is taking that little zappy tool
tool and zapping these um, prominent blackheads and whiteheads, it can help in helping to get rid of them. It does come with a risk of scarring, but it's certainly an option. For patients who only have a few of them, we can take a tiny little punch biopsy and excise the uh, problematic pore. That is an option. But as you can imagine, if you have a lot of these, that is not going to be feasible because when you take a punch biopsy, it does leave behind possibly a scar. So that wouldn't be ideal if you have a lot of these. But if you have just a few or one that's really prominent and bothersome to you, then yes, it definitely can be an option for getting rid of it. What about extraction? People go berserk when it comes to comedone extractions. I mean, it's a whole genre on the internet of watching people extract keratin from an enlarged pore. It really is just fascinating to people to watch that come out. Is that going to be helpful here? You might actually get some temporary improvement in the appearance of these solar comedones and blackheads by extruding some of that material. The key is that the material needs to kind of be softened first. So using something like salicylic acid or a topical retinoid can help loosen some of that so that it extracts more readily. I don't suggest trying to extract them yourself at home because you can get scarring quite easily. But in a dermatologist's office or if you go to an esthetician, they might extract some material and you may get a temporary improvement. Extractions, listen, they can be helpful for acne in certain situations, but in this case, they're kind of just a very temporary fix. The problematic pore will just fill back up again, so it's kind of, you know, a very temporary solution. And again, you can get scarring with extractions. And not all comedones are amenable to extraction, and if you try and extract a comedone whose contents is really quite firm and cemented down in there, it's a lot more likely that you get scarring. It's never too late to start sun protection. While that will not get rid of these, it definitely will help in keeping your skin healthy. And if you're somebody who has these, like I said, you probably have a lot of like little pre-skin cancers. And we know that patients who have a lot of pre-skin cancers, if they start wearing sunscreen regularly, it actually helps out their skin cancer journey, so to speak, and that they ultimately make fewer of these little pre-skin cancers so long as they use sun protection. And that doesn't just include sunscreen, which as a side note, does not cause these blackheads, but rather it can protect against them. Um, in addition to sunscreen though, you wanna do other sun protective measures, wearing a hat, seeking shade. Make sure you follow up with your dermatologist regularly to monitor for any worrisome skin changes. And if you notice a mole is changing, and especially if you have this extensive sun damage, that is definitely a sign to see your dermatologist sooner. All right, guys, so that is the blackhead story that sunscreen is trying to save you from. I hope this video was informative to you with regards to solar comedones. If you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.